Last week, we continued exploring the Gulf of Fonseca, sailing from the islands of El Salvador to Isla Tigre in Honduras. Well, we've had a really great night sail. We left the Gulf of Fonseca yesterday evening. Uh, probably the sun had just gone down when we headed out. So it was probably about six o'clock or something like that. And we had some bloody good wind for most of the night. We've had a reef in the main all night long. Came close to getting knocked down once at start, just with a 30 knot gust out of nowhere from around one of the islands. Stay sail. Genoa out right now. Still got that single reef up there in the main. And we're cruising along about six and a half knots. Pretty good heel, and uh, you probably can't tell from the sand that the. Yeah, probably got a good 15, maybe 20, knot, uh, 20 degrees every now and then. So we're coming up on a great morning here. Hanging up some laundry we did while we we're out at sea here. We're just about to come into Corinto, which is Nicaragua. Coming through the channel right now. Gave a call a few times on the radio to the port captain and a little while later someone finally called us back. Told us the channel's free, go ahead and go in. So sailing on in. It's kind of a commercial port here, so we'll figure out where we can anchor and if and how we check in. But it's been a really nice sail. Coming into a new country. Well, country we've been to before, but another country we're back to. Different place. We haven't been here before. We've been only been to the south, San Juan del Sur, about six months ago now. So, new place. It's new pretty country. far north. It's a couple, uh, it's probably like an I want to say maybe an hour outside of Leon, which is one of the larger towns in Nicaragua. Since this was an active commercial port, there were red and green buoys and channel markers here, marking the safe, deep water entrance inside the protected harbor. Being a commercial port, we weren't quite sure what to expect, but we found it was not too large or imposing. There was dock space for two large cargo or cruise ships, and today there were two cargo ships being loaded and unloaded. And reloading the back one. Calling the port captain, if they answer. See where we anchor and get to shore, because it looks all like all kind of port area. Hola, buenos días. Um, estamos adentro del puerto. Um, ¿Dónde está el mejor lugar para anclado? Uh, ¿Cerca de los pescaderos? Enfrente de la planta, una planta ahí, planta eléctrica, Margarita, enfrente por ahí. Ok, enfrente, perfecto. Y su oficina de, de la capitanía está el edificio grande que dice Puerto Corinto. Negativo, negativo. Este, capitanía está en este momento escuchándolo. Capitanía, capitanía. Dale, aquí estoy a la escucha, adelante. Dígale que eh, después del puerto sigue Capitanía aquí por los bancos. Ok, ¿no? muchas gracias. Vamos a estar en claro cerca de la planta. En nuestro lanchito podemos poner uh, detrás de la planta. Y la lanchita donde están los barcos pesqueros. Pues, ahí hay este, seguridad. Este, este, Ok, muchas gracias. Uh, vamos a venir a usted uh, en un rato. Uh, uh, that way, yeah. I just dropped the anchor in Corintos. There's a fishing fleet ahead. We're going to go park the dinghy there. Mangroves behind us. Go find the port captain. Some food. The bank. An interesting place. <laughs> Very industrial. Yes. If you look this direction, that direction looks quite nice. It's got like the volcano. Go on an adventure. Another one. Another one. 
With our dinghy put together, we all climbed in, bringing our passports and boat documents along to present to the port captain and immigration officials. Walking through town, we went looking for the bank and port captain's office, finding some ice cream and nice architecture along the way. Our check-in was fairly easy, with all of the officials coming to meet us at the port captain's office, and then going to the bank next door to pay the fees. Waking up in a new place is always exciting, and this was a particularly nice spot. Corinto is at the mouth of a mangrove estuary, and with the moon setting over the flat, calm water on one side of the mangroves, and the sun coming up on the other, slowly lighting up all of the volcanoes in the distance, it was a pretty tough view to beat. Where are we going? Up the mangrove channel. Let's see if we can make it up there. Everything else is pretty much unnavigable according to what the uh, local blokes were telling us, but we should be able to take this one channel up towards the bridge. We can take a bus into a town called Shinan Shinandega. 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 Found some water to drive in. Found a little bit of water to drive in. Pretty excited to check this place out. Very different than anywhere we've been in Central America. Definitely has a little bit of a feel of our favorite place in Mexico, Magdalena Bay. No, it's not going to be the same as that, but being back in these awesome mangroves and this flat, calm, peaceful water, it's nice. It's beautiful here. You got the volcano backdrop on one side, mangroves really pretty. I'm excited. Excited to be back in some mangroves. I wasn't expecting this. So I'm pretty excited. Lots of local fishermen, I think, coming up in their lanchas, their little boats. Tons of birds, egrets, herons, frigate birds, the mud flats. Bacon? Bacon. We traveled up the estuary as far as we can go until we reached a low bridge, which was the main road from Corinto inland. Where are we going? To town, hopefully. We're going to try and find our way to town. Shenandaga, if we can find a way to leave the dinghy here and get a bus. Hey, there goes a bus the other way. Hey, bus. I get this sheet, she'll fall in here in a minute when I... <laughs> we headed over to what seemed to be a hotel with a stairway down to the water. Then we headed up to the road to try and flag down a bus into town. For bus. Waiting for the bus. Had a few pass by and they all are full with no space. We're in between towns. Hola, Chinadega, see? Thanks, sir. A central Chinadega? Huh? Is that a central? Oh man. Once we got into the town of Chinandega, we took a taxi to the local supermarket. Outside, the streets were busy, and all of the shops were blasting their music and advertising their big sales. This was what was called Black Weekend here. 
or a big sale weekend before the holidays, modeled after Black Friday in the States. And loud music and DJs seem to be the way to advertise. Your last sunset on the boat? Yeah. Sad times. <laughs> it's a pretty good one though. It is. Emily is going to leave us tomorrow. So where to after here? Home for Christmas, so that's back to the UK. January we're undecided at the moment. <laughs> and then we're coming back out in this direction to Costa Rica in February, so. Okay. Maybe see you guys so, again. Yeah, maybe yeah. We'll, be, we'll be back. What are your thoughts on being on a boat? Being on a boat? It's pretty good fun. Yeah? Yeah. It's a good way to travel. You've got a pretty good <laughs> show. Is there anything that surprised you? Not really. I think, I, uh, I don't know. I was kind of expecting all of it, really. But, well, not expecting it, but nothing was like, oh my god, that's crazy. <laughs> Aside from the amount of rubbish there is in the world. Rum and coke. Rum and coke. I thought we were going to go drink upstairs, didn't I? Okay, I'll drink. Drink. <laughs> so much stuff. The next morning, we all loaded into the dinghy with Emily and her bags. We were sad to say goodbye, and we had truly enjoyed having her on board. It had been a great experience sharing the cruising lifestyle with someone new and refreshed our perspective on what cruising is all about. I kind of go straight up here or something like that. Oh, it feels so cool. Bye bye. Bye bye. Very hot already. Very sweaty. Hot day. Today we are returning the English person from whence she came. Not really. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> You're just sending me back. We're to sending her on her journey. Banishing her away. <laughs> her punishment is go and sit in airplanes and airports For and the buses. Next two days. And yeah, trains. Got the full gamut. Trains, if planes. Automobiles. If we can get in an automobile. Yeah. So that's the challenge right now. Step one. So we're kind of in the middle of the route. The buses don't leave until they're full. That makes sense. They fill the buses up and then they leave. So there's not much space, if any. So we already have one pass by with nothing. We'll see if we, we can get lucky like yesterday. Three people and two big bags. The bags might have to stay. Uh, the bag. Uh, we'll leave the person. People. We don't mind. Yeah, it's just a person. Eventually, after several full minibuses passed by, we ended up settling for a shared taxi ride into town, which is a common practice in this part of the world. Where are we at here? We are at the bus station in Shenandega. I think we got a bus sorted for Emily. It says it's direct. I don't know. We'll see. It's only 90 Cordoba, which is like three dollars. So pretty good for a two-hour bus ride. So Emily's run off. She's going to use the bathroom real quick. Uh, say goodbye to her, and then we're gonna go find some food and food, Wi-Fi, air conditioning, all those good things. Yeah. Fire. <laughs> With the bus loading people and full of snack vendors until the very last moment, finally it rolled out of the station and we headed into town for some errands. Well, that's it. Emily is gone. She has left us, She's headed back somewhere nice and cold, which sounds good right now. Somewhere very cold. It's good to have her on board though. It's our first time having like long-term crew, not just for a single passage. Very long-term crew. I mean, we had her there for about a month. Yeah. Would have been happy to have her for longer and uh, hopefully okay. we'll have some other great people along on our way. But for now, we're probably going to continue south tomorrow or something like that here in Nicaragua. Today, 
We say goodbye to Emily. We lost our crew member. But look at that sunset behind us. That is a pretty nice sunset. Hillary is off on a paddleboard ride right now in this gorgeous, gorgeous glow. She is wandering off way over there up the mangrove channels. I had a little bath. Now I'm just taking in a fresh breeze and a gorgeous sunset. Look at that. Come on guys, that never gets old. Never gets old. We've got a volcano off behind us over here. A couple of volcanoes, but a really huge one. And hopefully Hillary comes back. She didn't take a radio. She's supposed to take a radio when she's out of sight. Got a nice light breeze behind us right now so we thought we'd sail off anchor sail on down the channel we've uh, kind of on top of the high tide it's probably about to turn if it hasn't already good news is that'll give us some extra depth going down because we were in about two meters up over here so and i six, think that's below feet. the keel two meters below the keel is what we eat. yeah it's pretty shallow the mud flats around here and we're in about just under four and a half meters right now but we're going to follow our track out of here we took it nice and slow up here and it's high tide now. We came up at low tide. That way if you do get stuck, you get out at high tide. Because uh, the tides are quite large right now, up in here, and especially because it was the full moon a couple of nights ago. We're yeah, gonna head down to back to the port. Back to Crinto. Gonna go get our zarpe so we can leave bright and early tomorrow. Maybe we need a domestic some... zarpe here, so you wanna explain that? So, usually every time you leave a port, definitely if you're leaving the country, you need some sort of departure document to give to the next port. And Mexico is pretty easy. You didn't have to do that most places, but here in Nicaragua, you have to do that even if you're traveling domestically within the country. So we need something that says, we're leaving this port, we're headed to the next port. So when we get there, they can say, yes, this is you, you came from here. Okay, I need to move the boat because we're gonna crash into the mangroves. Yeah, let's not do that. Always nice when we can do these slow sails out of tight places or mangroves wherever we are. It's not a fast trip. I mean, we're still doing two and a half knots, but it's quite beautiful not to have to turn on the motor. And as long as you plan everything all right, time the tides. We've got a light breeze behind us or coming off our beam right now. We had a couple of shallow spots the other day. We marked those on the chart. We'll usually Put in a little bit of a waypoint in case we need to share them with someone later on or just for notes for ourselves when we try and work out why we did some big squiggly turn it's because we came into a shallow spot or something i'm, I'm gonna... trying to find the birds i saw up in the mangroves we're getting to the end of our north america bird book we need to get like a south or central america one anyone know of any good ones this one's been awesome so far but we need something more south more tropical. That's what I saw, a yellow warbler, and they have a special mangrove quilt adult. That's just what he looked like. A red head and a bright yellow body. There you go. Pretty cool. This estuary was such a beautiful place to spend time, and it was hard to leave. But that's the thing about traveling. There are so many nice places to see and explore. Sometimes you have to leave a really nice spot in order to find another one. I'll ask goodbye, it's hard to imagine the seasons without you by my side. And I know this winter is going to be especially cold. Like the Get in to see the port captain, get our Zark Bay. 
sun has just set to over Corinto here, back in the busy port area. Got up nice and early this morning. We headed off anchor about 4 a.m. out of Corinto's and we're making our way south. Motored out of the channel and now we are under sail. Light winds, we're hoping there should be some wind filling in today. About, about 40 miles to go. We had a great week, but we said goodbye to Emily. She is now back home in the UK. Wanna say hi to her and wanna say thanks to everyone else out there for leaving your comments and continuing your support along the way. A special thanks to John and Robert, SV Kiwa. SV Dukes, uh, Brendan, Mary. There's a whole bunch of you out there. So thanks very much, really appreciate it. And until next time, Adios. Cheers. It's gonna blow. What? It's gonna blow, the volcano.